Workshop 2 Art with Dough The other day I was uh, reading an article about creating sculptures with dough um, and so I decided to have a go and I created these two sculptures. The thing that I um, found is most important is how to mix the dough. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you. I've got um, a bag of just ordinary straightforward table salt, some plain flour and what I'm going to do is to mix two cups of flour, one cup of salt and a big stir up so that they're mixed evenly in the bowl. Just like cooking. And then I'm going to gradually add one cup of water. Keep stirring, keep adding the water till it mixes into, mix into a firm dough and you can actually get it out of the bowl and place it on a floured board so that you can knead it to make it in a workable state. Right, so, so save some time now. Um, I've actually made some dough and kneaded it so that it's in um, a malleable state so that we can actually make some sculptures from it. So I've got some here. And I'm going to start just kneading it onto the flour so that it doesn't stick to the board. And then we'll decide what we're going to make first. Right, now I'm going to um, show you how to make one of these, which is obviously a leaf with uh, veins on the, on the outside. And to do that you need to go into the garden and find a leaf. And you need a leaf, this is a primrose leaf, with very deep veins on the back, because those are the ones that you're going to press into the dough to make the pattern. So what I'm going to do is to press the leaf into the dough quite firmly and then lift it off the board and then I'm just going to cut round it with a pair of scissors so the next job is to carefully peel the leaf off and you can see you're getting the imprint of the vein. You just keep peeling it off carefully. This example that I made earlier is um, has actually been in the oven to dry out, so that's why it's much more solid and resilient. And I also just placed it over a curved surface, something like that, so that uh, it would retain its shape. So you don't have to stick with just uh, flat images, you can go on to more three-dimensional projects, for example like this sheep, which is just a ball of dough um, for the body and a ball for the head. But to actually get this woolly effect, you can have some fun with either a garlic press or a sieve. So if you wanted to use the garlic press, you just place some dough in there like that and squeeze it and then you get the wool coming out like that and then you just build it up or if you wanted a slightly finer coat not quite so woolly you can push it through a sieve like this it's great fun I highly recommend it and it also does uh, lend itself to making stamens for the centre of a flower like that one all these things need to go into a cool oven to dry out and then they're ready for painting. These are some more examples of things that I've managed to achieve using the techniques I showed you earlier. Um, but later on um, when they're dry and you're feeling more adventurous you could move on to adding some colour and this is an example of a bird on a nest that I've just added some quite thin watercolour to the surface and this one, this is elephant, 
I added some more to colour and also varnish on his toenails and tusks so you get a special effect. <laughs>